Hello, BookTube. Last week, Greg of Another Bibliophile Reads made a video in which he argued that books should not be adapted into film. And he listed five novels that he thought should not be adapted. Steve Donahue uh, made a response video in which he argued that books should be adapted to film and that the films are, for the most part, better. And he listed ten um, books that have already been adapted that he would like to see remade. I thought this uh, these two videos sounded really interesting and I wanted to add my own sense to it. So I'm going to um, basically do a variation of both their videos. So I'm going to list five books I don't think should be adapted either because I don't I think these books are unfilmable or I just wouldn't want to watch the uh, film adaptations. Um, I will also list five um, books or five novels um, that have already been adapted some several times that I would like to see remade again. Um, and then I have a list of 10 books that, as far as I know of, have not been adapted yet, but I would like to see. But then again, maybe not, because I don't really watch TV or movies all that much anymore. Um, I would like to get back into the habit of that, but I don't really have the time for it. So anyway, but let's get going. So first up is, so the first I'm going to do the five I don't want to see adapted. And first up is Duck's Newburyport by Lucy Ullman. This is a monstrous novel about a woman um, making pies or cinnamon rolls um, and basically going on a thousand plus page um, stream of consciousness rant. Um, I have no idea how this book could be filmed. I I absolutely believe this book is unfilmable. <laughs> Um, next up is, um, a book that I have unhauled recently, so I need to show you from a picture of, on uh, my Kindle. Hopefully it works. Um, Blue Angel by Francine Prose, and it is going to not cooperate. Um, so the Blue Angel, so Blue Angel is a satire, I think, about a creative writing professor who's at a uh, small New England liberal arts college who's teaching an intro to creative writing, or maybe it's a higher level course. Most of his students really like talent, but there's one who shows some promise, and the professor develops a thing for her, and the student accuses him of sexual harassment. Um, and I think in the light of Me Too, I don't think this book really, or this novel really should be adapted or could be adapted, particularly since prose invites the reader to sympathize with the professor. Um, now, I've never fully finished the book. I have tried it twice and failed on it, um, so I don't quite know, but I don't think it would be filmable. Um, next is um, The Sluts by Dennis Cooper. This is a novel about a group of rent boy connoisseurs, patrons, clients, um, who have developed a website in which they rate uh, local rent boys and one rent boy in particular becomes the source of a obsession for a number of these men it's been a very long time since i read this book um and i think while maybe in the 90s it could have been filmed um i know queer cinema at the time was a bit more brutal um 
much as Dennis Cooper's fiction is, I don't think that really would work today. Next is uh, Radiance by Catherine M. Valenti. Like I said yesterday, this is a space opera set in a radically different solar system. And while on the surface that could be an interesting movie, the fact is, is that how exactly would, um, I mean, because you could do like severance, like the filming, her disappearance, what happened, that could work. But how exactly do you adapt her father's attempt to cope, his sort of continual rewriting a movie adaptation of this? I could just, I don't think it would work. And finally, um, The Rat by Gunther Grass. It has been a very, very long time since I read this book. Um, if I remember correctly, it's a mix of post-apocalyptic fiction and fairy tales. Um, and I just, I don't think it could be filmed. So moving on to the books that I think um, I would like to see remade. I'm going to start with um, King Solomon's Minds by H. Ryder Haggard, which while I do have it in Omnibus Edition, I don't really want to show you the spine. because <laughs> So I'm going to oh, show you um, the uh, picture of the first edition. So King Solomon's Minds is a Victorian adventure novel. About uh, It's narrated by Alan Quatermain, an old, grizzled um, hunter living in South Africa. One day he is approached by a British aristocrat, um, Sir, Henry Go uh, Sir Henry Curtis, and his traveling companion, uh, Captain Good. And Sir Henry is looking for his missing younger brother who'd gone out to South Africa to seek his fortune after a fight uh, with his older brother. Um, and during the conversation, Quatermain lets, mentions that he'd met uh, Sir Henry's younger brother and that he'd gone in search of King Solomon's Mines, a fabled source of wealth uh, in the north. And Quatermain happens to have a map. So... They, so uh, Sir, Kurt, uh, Sir Henry and Captain Good eventually con uh, convince um, Alan Quartermain to accompany them on a journey to find the mines. So they gather a crew, including um, a man named Umbapa, and they travel to, um, to the north in search of the mines. They eventually, uh, after num numerous hardships, they eventually come to the land of the Kukuanas, a uh, heterophore undiscovered uh, kingdom in Africa, in which uh, the diamond mines of King Solomon, or at least somebody's diamond mines, um, are, are, lo are located. And while there, uh, Mbappa reveals that he is the rightful king of the Kukuanas, and solicits Quartermain, Sir Henry, and Captain Good to overthrow the tyrannical King Twala, who's um, Umbaba's evil uncle. Uh, the novel, so King Solomon's Minds has been adapted three times. I've seen two of the adaptations, and it's never really done right, usually for um, fairly racist reasons. Um, there is an interracial uh, romance. Uh, Captain Good falls in love with um, a young Kukuwana woman. Um, and usually in adaptations, um, Sir Henry is replaced by a woman um, to be Quartermain's love interest. Usually Quartermain is de-aged by several decades. Uh, but I would like to see 
King Solomon's Mines adapted right. Um, although I don't know necessarily if it really could be now with uh, the current political situation or cultural situation, but I'm pretty sure it could be done well and done interestingly with a con kind of um, a more sort of awareness of colonialism. Anyway, so the next, so I'm going to move on to um, Agatha Christie. Even though Agatha Christie, much like, um, has been adapted numerous times, but I would love to see a film version of um, Miss Marple. So I'm going to go with The Murder at the Vicarage. Um, so this is the first Miss Marple novel. It um, deals with a, so the novel deals with the murder of Colonel Prothero, a thoroughly unlikable um, resident of the village of St. Mary Mead, uh, where Miss Marple lives. And there are two suspects for the murder, um, Prothero's wife and, and her lover. And things go from there. And it's a really good um, novel. I really quite enjoy it. Um, and would love to see it adapted as a film. Um, usually it's adapted as a TV series. Although maybe it's well past time for a TV version of um, our new Miss Marple TV series. So the next few books I would like to see adapted or readapted are... Um, Classics of Children's Literature. First up is The Neverending Story by Michael Enda. This is a story of a young boy named Bastion who finds a book that never ends. And the book basically has a connection to the real world in that everybody who reads The Neverending Story has to save the world um, in the first half of the book, and then become the protagonist in the land of the book in the second half. Um, the Never Ending Story was famously adapted in the 80s and um, also in the early 90s, and I would love to see a new adaptation of it. Although I, I think there actually is an adaptation in the works that it had, that's been in development hell for years now. Next, I would like to see um, The Phantom Toll Booth um, by Norman Jester adapted again. So this was adapted in the 1970s as a live action animation mashup. It's the story of a young boy named Milo who uh, one day when he gets home from school finds a present and that present is a toll booth and that toll booth transports him to a world not unlike Wonderland, in which he sort of has all sorts of educational um, adventures. Um, I love the 1970 adaptation. I would, when I was a kid, I would watch it, um, or I would hope we would be able to watch it uh, during special times in school. Although we never finished it, which annoyed me to no end. But anyway, it took me years to finally actually watch the whole movie, even though I'm fairly sure we probably could have rented it or actually bought it. Or maybe we couldn't. I don't know. Anyway, but it took me a few, several years, uh, decades really, before I actually read the book. And I really enjoyed it. It's one of the few children's books that I read as an adult that I really enjoyed. And I'll wrap up the remakes with um, Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. This is a novel about a young woman who falls in with a magician named Howl, who is trying to avoid um, his obligations. It, it was famously adapted in the early 2000s by Hiao Miyazaki in an amazing adaptation, but I would love to see another ver uh, remake of it. Hmm. Okay, now on to the 10 books that I would like to see adapted 
that haven't been adapted to my knowledge. Nor do I think have they have they been um, is there any talk of them being adapted, except for maybe one. But first is um, wait. Since I'm done with my tablet, I am going to go back to charging you because you're on ninety five percent, and I want you at a hundred. Anyway, so first up is Neuromancer by William Gibson. This is one of the first uh, cyberpunk novels. It's the story of a um, hacker or an early version of a hacker who is hired to break into um, a safe in a space station. And it's been a long time since I read it, um, but I would love to see a cyberpunk novel adapted because I think it could be so. Next, I would like to see A Girl, Woman, Other uh, by Bernadine Evaristo um, adapted. This is a novel that tells the story of uh, 12 women um, or 11 women and one non-binary um, individual and how they are all interconnected. And I would love to see this adapted as a TV series, like a one season TV series or mini series. I think that would be absolutely wonderful. I would also like to see The Master of Go by Yosunari Kawabata adapted. Like I said yesterday, this is a lightly fictionalized account of the retirement match between um, Honenbo Shusai and uh, Minoru Kitani. And I think this would just make a wonderful movie. Um, I know a number of Kawabata's works have been adapted, uh, but never this one, and I would love to see it. Um, I would also like to see um, Hurricane Season by Fernanda Melchor adapted. Although this might be, this would be a very brutal, realistic horror novel. Um, it's about the murder of a transgender bruja uh, and the young men who killed her and their accomplice and some of their other relationships. And it is an incredibly brutal novel that I read last year. And on the surface, one would think this is a novel that I really would not have gotten on with, but it worked on me, and I think it would be interesting to see it adapted. Um, I would also like to see The Swimming Pool Library by Alan Hollinghurst adapted. Again from yesterday, this is a gay novel from the 80s about a wealthy young gay man who, or he's in his mid-20s, who really doesn't have much to do. He's independently wealthy. He doesn't really need to work except to um, defeat boredom. Uh, one day he, while he's out cruising, he um, happens to perform uh, CPR on an older aristocratic gay man who's had some health issues, who had a health scare. And later this man invites the main character to write his biography and while doing so introduces the protagonist to um, gay British history. And I would love to see it adapted. I think it could be a really interesting movie or TV series. At least one season. Next is um, The Ruin of Kings by Jen Lyons. Uh, this is um, not really, I guess it would be The Course of Dragons, I think is what the series' name is. But it's it's a weird, complicated um, fantasy. I've only read um, the first book, and I have mixed feelings for it, but I kind of would like to see it adapted. Um, I would also like to see... Perdido Street Station by China Medieval adapted, although 
I'm not entirely sure if it could work. Um, again, from yesterday, it's set in the weird city of New Kribuzon. It's about Isaac, who is a renegade scientist, who's trying to produce an engine that would create infinite power. And he's sidetracked from this by Yagurk, a Garuda, who's looking to have his flight restored after having had his wings amputated. Um, and so Isaac collects a number of flying creatures, one of which is a moth that when it pupates into a moth, turns into a monster that eats people's consciousness and poops out nightmares, which apparently can also be turned into a drug, which is why there are five of them and not one of them. But anyway, and it's up to Isaac to clean up his mess while having to avoid the crime lord whose moth he stole, um, the government of New Krobuzon, who for some reason is working with the crime lord, and the moths themselves. It's a wild novel. I loved it, and I would love to see it adapted. I would also like to see a Black Leopard Red Wolf by Marlon James adapted. Um, so this is a novel that's it's more sword than sorcery than epic fantasy, um, inspired by African folk tales and mythology. It's about a man named Tracker who is hired to join a crew looking for a missing prince. And then later tracking down that missing prince after the prince and his um, companions um, hurt Tracker seriously. Um, I I have mixed feelings for this book, but I would love to see it adapted. And I I think there is um, development for this. I think it probably would need. The final book in the trilogy to be um, done before it can be uh, fully adapted. But anyway. Uh, I would also like to see um, Ian M. Banks's uh, culture novels adapted, con uh, including Consider Phlebas. Uh, this is a space opera that's set at the tail end of the, the Adarian culture war in which um, two powerful space polities are going at it, trying to annihilate each other. Um, and the war hinges on the acquisition of a missing mind. Um, the culture uses hyper-intelligent artificial intelligences to um, control itself to regulate itself. And if the adherents manage to capture this mind, they have a, they stand a good chance of winning. And finally, I would like to see Nine Fox Gambit by Yoon Ha Lee um, adapted. This is the first book in the Hector Kate trilogy or Machineries of Empire trilogy. It's about a young woman named Karis who after after um, thinking out um, is drummed out of her um, crash and is forced to accept the memory ghost of an infamous um, war criminal in order to um, defeat a threat to the Hexercate. It's a wild relatively complex space opera that I think would make an excellent TV series. So those are five novels I don't think should be adapted, five novels I think should be remade, and five novels I think, well, five novels whose adaptations I think should be remade, and ten novels that have not yet had um, adaptations either on television or film 
that I would like to see. So anyway, if you would like to contribute, go ahead and do so. Um, and if not, hope you enjoy the video anyway. So I will be back tomorrow with probably another tag video. No. Tomorrow's the last day of the month. That means tomorrow is my monstrous Mabel call. It's like this. I went manga mad this month. And <laughs> yeah, but anyway, you'll find out. You'll see for yourselves tomorrow. So a new book tube until I see you tomorrow with my main book call. Thank you. Have a great afternoon and stay safe.